Hoping to tempt the Dragons to invest in another offering from overseas is Yvonne Aboaji. My product is Ghanaian and it's a brand new way to get your skin feeling fresh and revitalised. My skin is testament to it and I'm wearing no makeup. Is it a back scrub? I think it is. You do, you do realise you're going to have it in here. Hey, we're not allowed to do that. So if you've a look, remove Peter Jones breaking the rules. Bring back Theo. Bring back Theo. While someone in the den seems intent on misbehaving, will Yvonne's imported product get the dragons falling in line to invest? Hello, my name is Yvonne, and today I'd like to offer you 25% of my business, the Net Exfoliator, for £25,000. Now, you might be familiar with a range of exfoliating tools. However, the majority of these products are made from materials that might not often be recyclable. On top of that, if you have any mobility issues at all, you would struggle to get a good clean from head to toe with most of these options. So what's the answer? And I believe it's the net exfoliator. What we know in Ghana as a traditional exfoliating cloth called the Sapo. The net will last you for about two to three years. And for the duration of that time, you can throw the net in your washing machine, keeping it hygienic. If you have any mobility issues due to the length and the stretch in the fabric, you can get a good clean from head to toe. Since launch 18 months ago, I have bought every single net from the marketplace in Ghana, ensuring that the money goes back right into the hands of the market store holders. Thank you so much. I welcome your questions and you all find samples in your box. I thought they'd be in there. <clears throat> A nylon exfoliating cloth used in Ghana is the offering from Yvonne Aboaji, who is seeking £25,000 in return for a 25% share in her body care business. And the entrepreneur's pitch appears to have prompted Peter Jones to come clean. This isn't something that I actually do. OK. Um, <laughs> That's all right. But I, I get the whole point about when you get to the back part, it's mm -hmm. going to be quite difficult. So it's the length, it's it, kind of yeah. that. Absolutely. A okay. Good, effective, clean. So how much do you sell it for? £25. That seems expensive to me. Not really. So your usual um, exfoliating gloves or body brushes, they can range anywhere from £1 to £5 retail. But the thing with them is that you're replacing them probably every month in order to keep them hygienic. So across three years that you're using the net, you've paid £25. It's a lot cheaper than buying an exfoliating glove every month. How many have you sold so far? Um, in our first year of trading, we sold only 85 units. Right, so year one, you just sold 85? Um, I think first year, it was just mostly family and friends supporting me, feeling a little bit sorry. No, <laughs> OK, that's, um, that's but, honest. Yeah, but in the second year, um, my husband actually suggested that we inject a bit of money into the business. So we went with a PR company and we got featured in a range of um, publications. But our biggest um, feature was by India Night in the Sunday Times, and that um, basically launched us overnight. And in our second year of trading, we sold approximately 1,400. Wow. Over what period of that? How many months was that? Since February the 7th. OK, so in five months, basically. Yes. So you've done quite well, then. A raft of positive publicity has led to an impressive spike in sales. And Devon's product certainly seems to have struck a chord with Deborah Meaden. I can see how it works and I get how it works. My husband's six foot five, you know, and it makes me laugh sometimes. He comes in with a little back thingy and it looks like it's a child's, you know, toy um, against his back. But how does he get the middle of his back? So he's, he's got two things. He's got the body brush, so he's got a brush that he can scrub. And Don't then you help him out by just diving in and helping to his back for him? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see where this... I can't believe I... I cannot believe I walked into that. <laughs> yeah. Can I ask you about the packaging? Is that plastic? Um, it is PVC, yeah. I designed it that way so that the packaging will last you for the duration of the net. OK, so this is nylon mm -hmm. and that's plastic. Mm -hmm. 
And a lot of the products it replaces are actually quite natural products, aren't they? They are, but they do not last very long. They're not particularly hygienic. Um, the ability to throw that into the washing machine and keep it hygienic for the duration of its lifespan is a plus side of it that you don't get from natural products. Yvonne is standing her ground in the face of an eco-examination from the den's resident queen of green. Now textile tycoon Tuka Suleiman wants to discover more about the beauty entrepreneur's raw materials. Basically, if I have to be totally honest, it is a warp knit nylon. It's got no work content. Just cut it up. Um, and wh where are you buying this from at the moment? From Ghana. You're buying this from Ghana? Yes. But Ghana doesn't produce this fabric. No, they don't. Uh, they buy it from, from China. China, yes, yeah. that's right. The thing is that this product has been around in Ghana since the late 1970s, and that's, that, for a lot of people, is their income for their no. families. So... But what income? It's, if the fabric comes from China, mm -hmm. and the only work content is they roll up the fabric, mm -hmm. they cut it up, they don't even sew it. No. So it helps the people in China, it helps the transport companies, but does very little for the people in Ghana, apart from probably a couple of people rolling the cloth up and cutting it. Yep, so at the moment, we are obviously buying it directly from the marketplace. So people sell these products as their income. So we buy it from them. We could go directly to China. Yeah. We've chosen not to because we want to put the money back into their hands. But Yvonne, that, that sounds, that's, that's like a philanthropic concept. That's not a business. That doesn't help that local community in the, in the way that you think. You'd be better off to invest in the local community. You know, we've done a lot of work in many, many countries, not specifically Ghana, mm. but Kabira, for example, which is like one of the worst slums in the world. And we wouldn't be buying things from them. What we did is we went in and actually started businesses and supported them that way. Mm -hmm. So we made them creative in their own mindset to make them basically think about a sustainable business that they could have for themselves. So you're actually not helping them. And I think Tuka's spot on straight away there. Food for thought for Yvonne, as both Tuka Suleiman and Peter Jones express doubts over the benefits her current business model really offers people in Africa. But marketing maestro Stephen Bartlett wants to find out more about the beauty entrepreneur's attempts to grab the headlines. So you had this PR wave. When was the PR wave and what's happened since? So the PR wave was on the 7th of February. That's when we got the Sunday Times article. Yep. We had almost £25,000 worth of sales in that month. Yep. Um, that dropped slightly and has continued to drop. Give me details on when you say it's continued to drop. Yep, so the first month was about £25,000. Um, second month was about four, two and a half, and one. Why are you letting the business die? I, I work full time. I, what I have done is um, some Facebook marketing, some social media marketing, that sort of thing. But I think that PR is our best bet. Because most people have never heard of the product, they do need to hear it from a trusted source, I think. And that's what India Knight did for us. She was a trusted source. Yeah, I think, I think on that, just to challenge that a little bit, you're thinking of PR as in like getting in newspapers and stuff. Mm -hmm. Social media is a form of PR as well. Because this, again, is, is one of the products that you can demonstrate the value and use case for in 10 seconds on an Instagram story. Um, my, my big concern with this is you've let the business continually decline in sales. That scares me because I think, well, if you hadn't come here today and if you don't get an offer, where's this business going? L allowing the, the sales to decline in that way, to me, signals that this is probably a bit of a lifestyle business. It's not to say you're not going to make money, but I don't think I'll make a return on my investment. And so for that reason, I'm out. Disappointment for Yvonne, who has lost her first dragon. Is Deborah Meaden poised to pour more cold water on her plans to revolutionise the daily scrub? Do you know, there's something about it. I mean, I, I don't like the nylon piece or the plastic piece, not surprisingly. I have spoken to a company who have um, tested and said that it is recyclable. Um, we, we just need to find the right, the right recycling partner who would um, partner with us so we can actually send them back to them in bulk and they can recycle. Yeah, but that won't happen because people are not going to use this. Send it back to you for you to send it back to the right recycling partner. People don't bother and by the time they've washed it several times that ends up in landfill is what happens. I obviously don't feel terribly comfortable about that. 
So if I can't get behind it, I can't invest in it, Yvonne. I'm really sorry. Um, so I won't be investing. I'm out. The big worry that I've got is the Primax of this world are just going to look and think, oh, we can make one of those for 50p and we'll sell it in our store for two quid. Mm -hmm. And you are £25. And I just think it's, it's not going to work. That distance in between is not going to work. So I won't be investing today and I'm out. Your pitch was actually great. Thank you. But I think there's a lot of flaws in your business. I think what's best for you is to look at this product and get it on Amazon for 9 99 Get some volume going. And I think at 9 99 you might actually have something. You'll do a bigger volume, mm -hmm. you'll buy more, and, and, and you will create a nice little business for you and your husband. But as an investment for me, it does not make sense. So I'm going to wish you all the best, but I'm out. Three more turndowns means four dragons have walked away from the deal. Only a philanthropically inclined Peter Jones now remains. But will his generosity extend to a donation into deep cleaning? I do like the kind of projects that really have a, a real benefit in different communities. And I would urge you to continue doing this but then utilise the profits that you make and hone in on one specific project that has a lasting effect for the community, rather than, I've got food on the table just for today. Yeah. Make sure that they've got food on the table for the next generation. So I'm going to wish you the very best of luck, but it's not an investment, so I'm going to say that I'm out. Thank you so much, Thanks, Thank you, Bob. Encouraging words, but the beauty entrepreneur leaves the den with nothing. Her exfoliating cloth couldn't tempt any of the dragons into shedding their cash, but at least her failure to clinch a deal doesn't appear to have worked Yvonne into too much of a lava. Oh, I think it's been amazing, like, learning more about my business and how to add the social enterprise to it. I just hope that maybe there'll be a turnaround towards the end, but unfortunately not today.